Hi, it's Mr. Lineski here today with Unit 4, Section 1. Uh, unit 4 is our proofs unit. Um, so we're going to be taking a look today, kind of giving you a little bit of a review of some algebra proofs. Hopefully in your algebra class you did a few of these proofs. Um, proofs is when you just sort of justify your steps, where you sort of explain why you're doing what you're doing. Um, so what I'd like you to do for a quick moment is just to pause the video, and go ahead and write these uh, definitions in for all of these different properties. Okay, so hopefully you have those things written down. Um, what I'm going to do is just kind of quickly go through and give you an example of what these things look like. The commutative property of addition or multiplication, it works with either one. Uh, that's just when the order of the numbers switch. So I could have something like 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. And the commutative property just tells me that I'm allowed to switch the numbers and the answers stay the same. So 3 plus 2 is the same as 2 plus 3. Um, the associative property of addition or multiplication, again it works with either one, is when the grouping of the numbers switch. Um, so something along those lines could be if I had a multiplication problem that said 2 times 7 times 3, and 7 times 3 was in parentheses, and if I said that was equal to y, using the associative property what I could do is the numbers stay in the same order, but the parentheses switch. So the parentheses are just changing places, or the grouping symbols are changing places. Um, the transitive property is very much like the law of syllogism, like we talked about in Unit 3. Uh, it basically says if A is equal to B and B equals C, then A is equal to C. Sometimes I call that the middleman, so because they both have a B in there, I cancel them out. Um, so something like that might look like this. If I said 2x plus 5 was equal to y plus z, and then if I told you that y plus z was equal to 7, using the transitive property, I have y plus z here and y plus z here, I could say that 2x plus 5 is equal to 7. That's transitive property. Um, substitution is very, very similar to transitive property. In fact, sometimes in our proof unit, we kind of use them interchangeably. Um, but if I had something like 2x plus 10 is equal to y, and then if I told you that x was equal to 5, I could do a substitution and say, oh, substitute 5 in for x. So that's a substitution. Um, the addition property of equality, subtraction property of equality, multiplication and division properties of quality, um, sometimes you may hear referred to as the pose property of equality, P-O-E. Um, basically what that says is when you're solving an algebra problem, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other. So something like if I had 3x minus 2 is equal to 8, and I said solve for x, your first step would be add 2 to both sides. When I do that, that's the addition property of equality. So that gives me 3x equals 10, and now if I said solve for x, your ne next step would be divide both sides by 3. And that's the division property of equality, because I'm dividing both sides by the same thing. Whatever I do to one side, have to do the other. Um, symmetric property is basically when you just flip the sides of the equation. So if I had something like this, and I use the symmetric property, it might look like this. So basically those two things are just flipping. And then the distributive property is when you have something like 3 times 2x minus 1, and you distribute 6x minus 3. So remember, with distributive property, it's um, you're sharing the multiplication. It's 3 times 2x and 3 times negative 1. So here is an example of what an algebra proof looks like. Basically gives you an algebra problem, solves for it, and all you have to do is justify the steps. So um, when we're looking at a problem in a proof, we are given two things. We're given the given statement and the prove statement. What do we have and where are we trying to get? 
um, or where what are we trying to get to? So given that y equals 2 times 3x plus 4, and given that y is equal to 20, we want to prove that x is equal to 2. So in my problem, if I look here, that's just my given statement. Almost every single proof that we do in this class is going to start with the given. In a proof, you're basically asking the question, how do I get from this step to this step? So if I compare these two things, what's different about it is this has a 20, that has a y. So what did I do? Well, y is equal to 20, so I did a substitution. I substituted 20 in for y. So now how is this different from this? Well, I went through and I distributed the two. So that's my distributive property. So now how do I get from this step to this step? I'm subtracting 8 from both sides. So remember, whatever I do to one side, I have to do the other. That's my subtraction property of equality. Um, down here, how do I get from this to this? I'm dividing both sides by 6. So that's division property of equality, or my division po. Um, and then finally, if I have 2 equals x and it switches over to x equals 2, that's my symmetric property. So that's an example of an algebra proof. Um, some of this information here is just going to seem a little bit repetitive or kind of a review from unit one. These are just some things that may pop up as we move on to geometry proofs. Um, you'll probably get some true false questions relating to these ideas here, uh, which are things that we've actually seen in unit one. So I'm just going to read through these kind of quickly. It says through any two points, there's exactly one line. So that just means if I have any two points, I can draw a line through it. Um, through any three non-collinear points, there's exactly one plane. So if I have three non-collinear points, I can draw a plane around it. Uh, a line contains at least two points. That means there can be more than two points on a line, three, four, ten, multiple points. Um, a plane contains at least three non-collinear points, so there can always be more points in a plane. And if two planes, um, or I'm sorry, if two points lie in a plane, then the entire line containing those points exists in the plane. So that's kind of a combination of these two. Basically, if two points are in a plane, I can draw a line between those two points. And if the points are in the plane, then the line has to be in the plane. And then finally, just as a little reminder here, two lines, if I have two lines intersecting, two lines intersect at a point. And then if I have two planes that intersect, two planes intersect at a line. So the next couple of problems on the rest of the worksheet here are just some practice problems for you to try on your own. We will go over them in class next time. Thank you for watching.